into EchoSense is the estate page. So we can see all the different rooms associated with the um, estate and then look at some alerts here as well. Then we can take a little bit of a closer look at a room and see some general data about it. So we can see thermal data, power data, as well as utilization data. Um, and then also a feature built into this is um, something called an echo score, which I'm gonna let Lars explain a little bit more about. The echo score is a, a unique metric developed um, by the echo sense team. And it aggregates three important metrics, some of which are monitored regularly in computer rooms and, and some aren't. Uh, it's the combination of the compliance of intake air temperatures with, with ASHRAE recommendations, the stability of those intake temperatures, how much they're fluctuating, which is an important indicator of efficiency, and also uh, the utilization of the installed cooling capacity. And that's a metric that is very often overlooked. And um, the utilization of cooling infrastructure is, is generally quite poor. And that leads for the opportunity for reducing operating costs and recovering stranded capacity. So this combined echo score is a very useful tool for understanding where your facility uh, sits in the potential of improvement. Thank you, Lars. And then from here, uh, we can actually go into the room itself. So as Dean had mentioned, this is built on a gaming engine, which allows for very rich graphics as well as quick load times so that um, there's not a lot of latency. Uh, so also, as Dean mentioned, there's a couple different ways we can actually view this room. So for example, there's 3D or the first person view, which allows you to walk through uh, your data center uh, from anywhere that you have an internet connection, which really adds uh, a powerful tool for uh, remote monitoring. Um, then there's also a plan view, uh, which you can see is uh, shows the floor layout. Uh, but for this presentation, we're going to go ahead and stay on the 3D. So if you look over at the toolbar on the left, we can click on the information icon and see some quick um, information about this room. Uh, there's several different drop downs that you can actually dive a little bit further into. So for example, um, general information, environmental information, as well as cooling and power. And then we can actually do the same thing uh, with a rack. So all we have to do is click on a rack and we can hit this target button to zoom directly into it um, in the software. Uh, the first thing that will come up is uh, general information about the rack. Um, and then we get a little bit deeper into drop downs for uh, different readings, um, capacity information, as well as power information for this rack itself. Um, but then we can actually visualize this data in um, several different ways. So for example, we can turn on a couple filters and uh, look at the inlet versus outlet temperature uh, for the racks in the room. Exactly like the racks, we can do the same thing with the AC units. All we have to do is click on one, zoom right into it again, and uh, we see uh, different information about this AC unit now. Um, we can dive deeper into some of the readings uh, as well as look at exactly what um, this AC unit um, does, as well as look at some echo air data. So basically what we're monitoring uh, with this unit. Um, exactly like the racks, we can apply different filters. Um, so for example, if you just want to see this uh, return or supply temperatures, uh, you can achieve that here. Um, but then another really cool um, overlay that we provide is actually what we call the cooling trends. Yeah, so thank you, Travis. This is one of the exciting uh, features uh, made possible by the software. And so what we're looking at here is a histogram of this cooling unit's function over the last 24 hours. So each of these colors here now in, in this ghost image of the cooling unit represent, is, relates to a range of cooling delivered by that cooling unit. And the width of each of those bars represents the relative amount of time that the cooling unit was operating at that level. So you see the widest bar uh, happens to be on the top in that uh, dark blue. And so that's showing that most of the time in the last 24 hours, this cooling unit has been delivering between 60 and 70 kilowatts of cooling capacity. Um, down towards the bottom, uh, there's another bar there that's substantial, maybe about 25% of the time the cooling unit has been uh, delivering somewhere between 20 and 30 kilowatts of cooling. So, this is very useful information in, in looking at where the cooling units uh, are picking up load, which cooling units are picking up load in the room. For example, this cooling unit, you can see only has one bar 
um, it has spent 100% of the time in the last 24 hours running at this level, uh, that high level of cooling capacity. So this cooling unit is running flat out, doing its best to meet the set points um, that it has uh, been given and uh, not able, able to achieve that. It's just working as hard as it can all the time. So this information becomes really useful in identifying areas of the room where there is um, redundant cooling capacity and where there isn't. Perfect, thank you, Lars. And then from here, uh, we're actually gonna take a look at the built-in cooling advisor capabilities of the software. All we have to do is go ahead and click on advisor at the bottom, um, go ahead and hit start. Uh, the first thing that'll pop up are, uh, is a reminder basically saying that we're gonna be making recommendations for what you can change in the room to make it more efficient. Uh, go ahead and accept those. Uh, then you can title these uh, whatever you want. Uh, we call them optimizations by default. Uh, if you're doing a project, you can add different notes in, um, as well as set different limits for the max and min temperatures for the um, inlets across the, uh, across the room. So all we have to do is hit okay. And I'm gonna go, while this is running, I'm gonna let Lars explain the science a little bit further. Oh, thank you, Trev. So um, this is where, the power of the software really is revealed in that through the expertise and years of experience of optimization and, and operating data centers, uh, the EchoSense team has written in some very complex algorithms to uh, compare the data sets that are gathered from that granular data, that granular deployment of sensors, and provide recommendations on what can be adjusted in the room to reduce the um, operating cost by improving the efficiency and to regain stranded capacity. Uh, recommendations come in three forms, the location of supply tiles. So the software is um, considering every tile in the room and whether it should be a solid tile or a supply tile. It's also looking at the set points of the cooling units and, and comparing that along with the zones of influence and the intake temperatures to the cabinets and identifying what cooling units could potentially have their set points adjusted, most likely increased, um, but they may actually need to be de decreased in some cases to you know, make sure, uh, we're going back to risk, make sure that the primary goal of the cooling infrastructure is to provide the appropriate intake air temperature to IT equipment. And then also looking at the cooling units and identifying which of them may be able to be turned off. And so we can see uh, when we follow this recommendation, we look into it, we can see that it, there's a recommendation to turn this cooling unit number five into place it in standby. And just by uh, clicking on that target button as Travis has done, it zooms into the, where that recommendation is. And so based on the software's analysis, it's, it's seeing that this cooling unit is not picking up very much load and therefore turning it off will likely improve the conditions in the room while saving um, uh, operating cost. And so uh, this recommendation is to turn this cooling unit into, uh, and turn it off and place it in standby. And as Dean mentioned, the software doesn't control anything and that was a very intentional decision. This puts the power in the hands of the site people and also provides a nice um, educational tool. Uh, it's like having a uh, cooling optimization consultant on staff 24 seven to provide recommendations and uh, guide the process as things change in the room. Perfect. Uh, so from here, we can actually either complete the task. So go into the data center and uh, place this AC unit in standby. We can reject it. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and close out. Uh, then as soon as you've made all the changes you want to, you can go ahead and hit the stop button down here in the bottom left, uh, which will end this optimization and pull up a log of everything that's uh, been changed and any tasks that have been completed. I'll go ahead and hit OK. And as Dean mentioned earlier, after you run this, it's also very useful to be able to see, you know, exactly what's changed. So I'm going to go ahead and just change the filters uh, back. And what we can do is then at any point in time, we can hit the split screen view. Um, if you look over here on the left, we can choose a date. So if we go back to, uh, for example, May 1st of this year, um, 
and then we can click on a point uh, in time along this timeline to compare uh, two different times and really see the life cycle of the data center. So as you can see before uh, we ran an optimization, it's now over here on the left, and on the right is the current. So we can really compare and contrast the differences um, that, has been, that have been made um, across this room, as well as we can visualize this using a swipe view, which allows us to see um, in more detail the changes that each rack and each ACE unit has gone through. Yeah, this is a very po uh, powerful tool for understanding um, what changes have ma been made and uh, for demonstrating the benefits of, of airflow management and optimization practices. Perfect, and then from here, uh, we're actually gonna go ahead and take a quick look at the capacity module. So if we click um, the capacity button down here on the bottom navigation pane, um, you'll see that the view ha is um, going to change. Um, so we're applying different filters now uh, to visualize some different data. So if we go ahead and look at these racks, you can now see that there's three different colors that show up on the racks uh, that signify reserved power, allocated power, as well as measured power. Um, so one thing the software allows us to do by utilizing all the machine learning <clears throat> that Lars had brought up earlier, um, we can see if we can, for example, uh, add new equipment into a room and where in the room we can actually do that so that we make sure that we're, uh, we have enough cooling capacity. All we have to do, if you look at this rack right here, we just click and drag. And it might seem like there's some available space here, but it, the software itself is actually telling us, hey, there's not enough cooling capacity on this side. However, um, you can see it accepts it in other areas. So this is very useful um, in, being, in making sure that uh, the capacity is well balanced across the room. Perfect, and then from here, uh, we're gonna take a look at one more view, uh, which is the site power view. And I'm gonna go ahead and let Dean actually jump in and kind of explain what we're looking at here. Uh, so yeah, I, I briefly covered this earlier. So it, it's um, although we're focusing on the cooling, thermal, and uh, the optimization side here, um, Travis has uh, kindly just touched on some of the capacity management side, and, and obviously intrinsically linked to that is the ability or, or, or the requirement to pull in the power data. Um, so we have a lot of customers that uh, actually um, use replace existing EPMS type systems um, with and just use the visuals for, for, from our power uh, views here. Um, so the ability to pull um, power data from existing power loggers. So we, we don't supply power loggers. We, we just pull data from usually via Modbus, I have to say, uh, occasionally down from, uh, uh, sorry, occasionally from SNMP down at the rack level. Um, but certainly distribution boards, main income, uh, PDUs, it's usually Modbus, and we'll just pull the registers uh, and then give you the, the real-time power views uh, in a nice immersive way. You can click on any of those uh, components and get the, uh, you can graph it, pull whatever data you want, bring it to the capacity module, look at um, site metrics uh, in terms of CPU, uh, in terms of uh, PUE, um, DCIE, et cetera. Um, all feed into the estate view to look at um, overall power capacity, AC or DC. Uh, and as I say, you go from all the way from mains incomer down to rack level, um, if, if you should uh, so wish. Mm -hmm.